on everybody in the ghl mastery group and on youtube um super unique question came up last night and it's something that i have done before um but i wanted to show you guys how to do it because i think that it's a really valuable thing for you guys to be able to provide for your clients um and it was asked in the high level community directly last night um i got tagged on it and i was like yeah let's go and build that because why not it's easy um I always love these types of challenges because there's always people inside the high level community um, in general that come up with really complex solutions, um, you know, web hooking it out, you know, writing custom JavaScript code and you know, all these fancy things to make a simple solution work. But they forget that a lot of the times when you know what to do and you know how to think inside the high level platform, which is what we teach in the GHL Mastery VIP private group. Um, you can actually do a lot of this stuff way more simply than you think. So I am going to show you guys the question that came up. Um, this question was from Jeff Miller. Um, is there a way to automatically send a text at the end of the week that says, hey, so-and-so, um, for this week, we've generated X amount of leads, X amount of form fills, and X amount of live transfers or something along those lines. Um, and lots of comments about, yeah, you can webhook it out. You can update a Google sheet. You can do the math in there. You can do a blah, 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 blah. Um, but I'm here to show you and tell you that you can actually do this natively inside high level. You just have to get creative and you have to know how to think about things. And um, if you've done our, if you've watched our workshop on custom fields, custom values, um, pay attention because this is going to be custom fields, custom values on steroids. Um, and it's probably going to open your mind to a lot of different things that you can actually do using the methodology that I'm going to show you today. Now, obviously we're going to be doing some math functions because as a new lead comes in, we need to be able to say, yep, plus one. We just got another one plus one. We just got another one plus one. We just got another one. Uh, but how do you do that when a custom field is tied to a specific contact and a custom value is tied to a system-wide value? Um, so let's get into it. There's a couple fields that you need to create. Um, for the purposes of this demo, I'm only going to do one of these um, so that it doesn't take super long time to do. Um, but the concept is going to be the same for each one of these different lead tracking systems that you want to use. Um, it's just a matter of what is your trigger that is going to update what value that you're counting on. So here's the first thing that we're going to do. Uh, inside your custom values, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit so that you guys can see this. It's going to be awkward for me, but hey, I'm here for you guys, not me. Um, you're going to create a custom value that is a lead counter. Um, you would also then want to create a custom value for, I think Jeff's other examples were form fills and live transfers. So you'd want to create a custom value for each one of these um, so that you can, we're going to use the custom value at the end of the day to send that information to the customer. Um, and so create the custom values for each one. And then you're also going to want to create a custom field for each one. And so I gave Jeff his own little folder here. You're welcome, Jeff. Um, all we did is create a lead counter. Okay. It's got to be a numerical field because we're going to be doing some math and you cannot do math on text fields and other things like that. So it's got to be a numerical field that you're going to build this off of. So those are the two things you need. Now, in Jeff's specific use case, he's going to need six. He's going to need total leads, total form fills, total life transfer. So he's going to need three of those custom values and three of those custom fields. Um, and then he's going to do this workflow that I'm about to show you three times. Um, now you could get really creative and do it all in one, um, but that just creates a mess. So for this example, um, what I'm doing is I'm just going to say basic form submission, right? Um, so custom value math function form um, is going to kick this off. Now you could do a Facebook lead form. You can do a you know, funnel lead form, you could do whatever you want for your trigger to kind of kick this thing off. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to run a math function. And I don't know if you knew this, but you can run math functions using custom values that already exist. So what you're going to do is you're going to update the lead counter. So we're going to take that custom field that we just showed you for the lead counter. And again, that is contact specific, not system wide. But then what we're going to do is we're just going to add and we're going to grab our custom value for lead counter. So the existing number, which currently, as you saw, was three. And we're just going to add one to that value. And we're going to update the custom field again. So as of right now, this lead came in with a custom value that didn't exist. We are going to add three to it. And then we're going to add one. So now we should be at four. Okay, simple math. And then we're going to update that field. 
Then we're going to go and use the update custom value function inside the workflow. And we're going to go, we're going to update the lead counter value. And then we're going to, this current value is wrong because I haven't refreshed my screen, but we're going to take this and we're going to update it with the contact lead counter. So that contact lead counter is going to be four at the moment. Um, and so it's going to then update the custom value to four. Okay. Now, very, very important. You need to clear that field data for that contact now at that point. Um, and the reason you want to do that is because if this lead comes through again, um, what's going to end up happening is it's going to already have a value of four, and then it's going to do the math function of adding the current custom value plus one. Um, so depending on what that custom value is, you're adding four to that custom value. So you want to make sure that you clear that field data right after you do the math function so that that contacts field data is now zero. Um, so that if they come through this again, they're zero, they're going to start at the current custom value, value plus one, and then update it again. So that is step number one. Now I'm going to show you guys this in real time. So this is the form that we just did. So I'm going to put myself through this once again. We're just going to hit submit. And I'm going to show you guys the execution log. So I usually start with enrollment just to make sure that we've gone through everything that we need to go through. There we go. It's already gone. So we're going to go execution history. Now, this is the math operation here. So you'll see exactly how this worked. So we've got a current value of zero. And then we've got a custom value. The lead counter equals two. And then we're going to do two plus one equals three. Um, and so now your custom value is going to equal three, which is what we did in this update custom value right here. We updated it from two to three. Um, and then we are going to update the contact record and just clear that value. So there you go. That is how you do the counter portion of this. And then the other part of that was, hey, I want to deliver this every Friday um, to the customer and let them know how we're doing. So this brings us to workflow number two. Now, with this workflow, this is a, basically an internal only workflow structure where doesn't really matter what contact you put in here, depending on how you want to do this. You can either send an outbound SMS and put your client as a contact through this, um, and it'll be an internal only workflow. Um, or you can put yourself through this and change this message to an internal notification that goes directly to your client. It doesn't really matter how you do it. Um, a lot of the times when we're doing this, we will literally just create a contact record for our client. They're getting emails and text messages anyways. You might as well show their name in the conversation tab. So we have a contact record for our clients. But here's how you do it. Uh, you just go at any point in their joining your system, you just add them to this workflow. You can just add them as a test. It doesn't really matter. They're going to stay in this workflow and they're never going to leave it. So we're going to wait for a time delay. You don't need to have anything here because we're going to use the advanced window here. And we're going to wait till Friday at exactly 11 a.m. Okay, simple, simple wait step. Then we're just going to send them an SMS and we're going to say update on lead status or lead stats or whatever you want. How many new leads did we get? We are then going to use that custom value for the lead counter um, and then any other custom values that you're also tracking in that process. And that is going to send this text message to your client on Fridays at 11 to let them know, hey, this is how many leads we got. This is how many appointments we booked. This is how many live transfers we did. Um, and then they're going to get a quick little breakdown of this in their messages. Now I added this wait step vanity reasons. There doesn't really need to be there. Um, but then we're going to update the lead counter custom value to zero. Okay. So we're just going to take whatever that value is and we're going to update it to zero. So at 1130 on Fridays, this value gets reset. Um, and as I'm thinking about this, this vanity wait step probably should not be there. Uh, cause you want to start tracking new leads as of 1101, uh, that get generated. So no wait step, just clear it. Um, and then you're going to go back up to this wait step until 11 a.m. on Fridays. And your client is just going to sit in this loop and keep on rolling. Um, so there you have it, guys. That is a obviously a very simple version of what Jeff was asking about. Um, but that's what we just did. And all you've got to do is duplicate those functions for the different things that you want to track. Um, use the custom field for the contact to add the custom value that is currently the value plus one update the value and then you are done so um, as always guys if you liked this video if you found it helpful likes comments helps the algorithm helps me get more of my content and training to other people 
on the YouTube side for sure. Um, and then obviously if you're in Facebook land and you enjoy the GHL master group, invite your friends because we're here to help as many people as we can master the high level software, which is an absolute beast of a software. So again, if you're watching this live, let me know you're here because I like to know you're here. Um, and if you're watching this on the replay, let me know that you're watching this on the replay. And if you have any questions, as always, you can hit me up uh, in the DMs on Facebook. That's the best way to reach me. Um, and I'd love to be able to help you guys out. With that being said, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.